All right, so welcome to the series on boundary value problems. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the classification of partial differential equations. Now, the reason we need to know a little bit about partial differential equations is that they arise in a lot of uh, engineering and science problems, and they are, in fact, the most general descriptions of uh, physical phenomena we have. We have dealt with ordinary differential equations before, and we have seen how they can usually describe things like the rates of change of a particular function, but usually they only relate one variable to another um, at a time. We cannot really develop any notion of what would happen when you have more variables in a system. And that's where partial differential equations come in. They actually tell us how the different variables interact with each other in a closed system. And using that, we can actually model and simulate really complex uh, physical phenomena, such as electromagnetic wave propagation, fluid dynamics through some medium. We can also model things like earthquakes, uh, you name it. There, there are so many different applications of this. Unfortunately, partial differential equations, or PDEs, are very hard to solve. So... In general, just to give you a notion of what they look like, we can have partial differential equations of first order. So that um, refers to equations that only involve first derivatives. So we can have something like this. Equals to C. Something like this. So in general, what you will find is that most functions that you find will be functions of the three space variables, x, y, and z, or of any other space variables, depending on what coordinate system you're using. And you will also have a dependency on time. So this is what we would call a space-time equation. And the main reason is because it involves both space and time variables. Now, an equation like this, what you should expect from it is that you will get something like a, some, some solution that is actually going to change with each step of time. So maybe you would have a solution like this at, at times one second, but then you might have another solution that looks like this in the following time step, so let's say two seconds, and then it would actually keep changing with respect to time. So this is what we would call a time-varying uh, partial differential equation. Whereas a where some functions, so let's say we have a function of two variables, x and y, so if we have x in this direction and y in this direction, and if we didn't have a time term in it, but rather some constant or function of either x or y, what we'd end up getting is some, some sort of function that does not vary with time, and it's actually sort of stationary in a way. So, so this would be something like if you have a beam, or, or some structure, and you're applying external forces to it, this would give you the stress distribution across the, the structure itself. And remember, because stress is not a time-dependent uh, quantity, then the stress distribution would pretty much remain the same for that, as so long as the external forces into the system remain constant. So that's the main difference between a time-varying differential equation and a, what we would call an equilibrium uh, or stationary um, partial differential equation. So that's just to give you a notion of the physical meaning behind them. Now, obviously, you can have second-order partial differential equations such as the following. So you can have something like this. And notice that A and B can be functions of X and Y as well. They don't necessarily need to be constants. So we can have something like this. And we could also have mixed derivatives. So we could have something like x and uh, partial derivative with respect to y and something like this squared. Sorry, it should be a square here. x squared equals to 0. That's another second order differential equations, but, but it has mixed derivatives involved. So that might be a little bit more complicated to solve. Now, th there's a whole range of things that we can uh, work with. There's a lot of different partial different equ differential equations you can come up with. But the thing is that the main ones that we're interested in are second-order partial differential equations that can be written as follows. So in, in a general 2D sense, so that means partial differential equations that are functions of x and y only, we can have something like this. So we'll have... I'm going to use the shorthand notation here, so we can have something like this. 
um, actually that should be x y because let's we we need to involve a mixed derivative somewhere there c u y y plus d u x plus e u y plus f u equals to g and now this is what we would call a general linear second order differential partial differential equation sorry and essentially what we can draw from this is that there are ways to classify this type of problem we can classify using something called the discriminant so the discriminant is basically defined as follows we're going to grab this term we're going to square it and we're going to evaluate it at some point of interest so x naught and y naught and then minus 4 times a x naught y naught times c x naught y naught and the reason we need to evaluate them at this specific point x naught y naught is because a partial differential equation can be classified as one type within a certain domain but then it can actually be classified as a different type in a different domain so it is actually sort of like the derivative it is a local concept and the classification of this linear uh, second order partial differential equation really just depends on the discriminant at each single point in our problem space so the way this works is depending on the value of the discriminant we're going to assign a different type of differential equation the first case is for the discriminant is less than zero in such a case we're going to call this partial differential equation elliptic so we say that it is an elliptic type and this usually relates to problems that have to do with equilibrium so something like solid mechanics might actually make use of elliptic partial differential equations equilibrium so that's the first type the second case is going to be for d equals to zero and then in that case we call this a parabolic pde now this usually relates to problems with propagation of some sort so something like a wave propagation and it is also tied in with dissipation problems so it could be something like heat dissipating through a um, specific medium and finally the third case will be for the discriminant is greater than zero so in this case we will call the pd hyperbolic And then this also relates to propagation, but it can also be used for modeling something like fluid flow. And remember that we're not really taking into account the time part of this equation. We could easily have a second or, or two-dimensional partial differential equation that also depends on time. And in that case, these definitions will still apply, but we would have a little bit um, more complications involved so there are generally many different ways to solve a partial differential equation and you would actually be surprised as to how well documented this is there's actually been massive compilations of solutions to a broad uh, range of partial differential equations both linear and non-linear um, and there are a lot of exact solutions but in general we prefer to do something to call, that people call numerical solutions and numerical solutions really just approximate the exact solution or maybe make up for a solution where it doesn't exist and in general for most practical partial differential equations it's very hard to find an exact solution so that's why we will resort to numerical methods and that's something that we'll cover later on but for now we're going to focus on one very specific solution method and this is something that we'll explore in detail by solving the heat equation in one dimension so basically the method we're going to explore is called separation of variables separation of variables so what this means is essentially you're going to take your partial differential equation whatever it is and you're going to assume that the solution to it is going to be some combination of two functions that are uh, both functions of a different variable so something like this we can have phi of x and then big y of y 
So if we assume a solution that is a product of two functions of one variable, then we can actually make substitutions into the partial differential equation and separate it to transform it into a system of ordinary differential equations. So if your equation involves two variables, you would expect a system of two ordinary differential equations. And those ones can actually be solved using your standard methods from ordinary differential equations that you should already know at this point. So it's a really nice method. It works for some common partial differential equations. It's not the most general or the most useful, but it is the one that we'll be using in this short course on boundary value problems. So basically you start with something like this and then you just get a system of ODEs. So that's the first step in the solution process. Then to solve the ODEs, you're actually gonna have to input some conditions. So we can have two types of conditions. The first one is called the boundary condition. And this is going to depend on what the physical boundaries of your problem domain are. So something like, let's say you have a rod and then it is being heated from the sides and then you're gonna have some heat distribution happening inside of it. Then basically the boundary conditions are gonna tell you, well, what, what exactly is enclosing this problem space? Where exactly does the solution exist? The solution exists only inside this rod. There is no heat dissipating on the outside. So basically the boundary conditions define the physical boundary of the problem we're solving. The other type of condition is the initial condition and that tells you what happens, what is the value of the function when time equals to zero. So at the beginning of your solution process. And basically by combining these two, we can essentially solve a time varying partial differential equation. Now boundary conditions are a little bit more complicated to define because as you may imagine, when it comes to a one dimensional equation, let's say something like u of x and t, this is, will result in a partial differential equation because we still have more than one variable. But if we call it a one dimensional PDE, because it only depends on one space, uh, space variable, the other one is a time, ver time variable. So if we were to plot this, so let's say we plot ux at some point t naught. So we need to plot this for every single point in time with respect to x. Then we'd expect something like this or whatever the shape of that particular function is. And basically the boundary conditions are going to tell you, well, what is the value of the function at this point, say point x1 and at point x2. Now one dimension is very simple because basically the boundary is defined by two points. What happens though when you have a function of both x and y, so let's say we have a function of x and y, and you can, you can imagine that the actual solution is going to be a surface, so we can have something like x, y here is spanning into the z direction, then this is going to be a little bit more complicated because we no longer have two points for our boundary conditions, we actually need an entire boundary that is going to be a set of points. So this boundary is actually going to be a lot more complicated to deal with because it can have any arbitrary shape. Whereas here, it's just two points and it doesn't matter which points you choose, it's always going to be pretty straightforward to implement. But when it comes to this type of problem, we're going to have an entire boundary and that's going to be very, very hard to deal with. So, so that's where complications actually begin to occur. And you can imagine that if you extend this to a three-dimensional problem where you have x, y, and z, and now your function is actually going to be a hap hypersurface, which you cannot really visualize all at the same time. Now you're going to have a volume that is going to form the boundary. So your boundary conditions now went from being two points to being a whole set of points that enclose this volume um, inside of which you're solving your problem. So you can see that this actually becomes more complicated than the higher dimensions that you can come up with. And obviously we're not limited to three space dimensions, we can have a lot more dimensions, but obviously in physical problems we only have three dimensions, so this is just as far as we could go. So the whole point of this is that you're going to use these two conditions to solve your system of ODEs to find a particular solution to the problem. And once you have done that, you can actually solve for other constants involved using other methods or concepts such as the Fourier series expansion.
So this is another thing that we'll explore in this series. The Fourier series is really useful for solving boundary value problems. And basically with that we can solve a lot of problems related to wave propagation or heat dissipation and simple second order linear partial differential equations. So before you move on to the next video where we'll actually use the method of separation of variables to solve the heat equation in one dimension, I recommend you, you revise a little bit about how to solve ordinary differential equations in spe specifically first order linear ones and also the second order homogeneous differential equations because that's going to be very useful for when you actually get into this topic. So in the next video we're going to explore partial differential equations using separation of variables.